Hey everybody, I'm Melissa Marie Harvey. This is MyoPro Chronicles Dirty Laundry Podcast. So this is an uncensored, um, unedited, because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so you guys get all the juicy parts of it. Um, today is the first episode, so I'm really excited. And I've got my girl with me, Stephanie Marie Beebe with Info <laughs> CEO. And we're just going to kind of talk about um, what we both do, what we both offer, um, how we came to be as far as friends, and whatever else pops up. Right? So, How cool is that name, though? We'll see. Melissa. I uh, love the name of this podcast. Oh, so dirty, cool. la dirty Laundry? Dirty Laundry! Right. Let's do it! I don't, I don't know <laughs> what's going to go on. So, um, yeah. So... So I'm so curious. I want to, I get to like kind of interview you a little bit in the beginning, I think, because it's our first podcast. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, so tell me, how did you come to be in Hawaii? Ooh. All right. So I had a patient. So I hail from the area of Syracuse, New York. So central New York. And one of my patients came out here um, after her husband passed away to kind of heal and figure out what she wanted to do. Right. Um, so her trip was supposed to be three weeks, turned into three months. And in the process, she had purchased a condo. So when my time for a vacation came up, she offered the condo for me. And I ended up coming out here for three weeks. Um, was out here for like a week and a half by myself and flew my mom and my aunt out uh, for about a week and a half. And just fell in love with the island and kind of put it on my five-year to-do list and ended up moving here in four. Wow. So the entire time she was here, um, she kept calling me and, you know, messaging me saying, you know, hey, Melissa, there's nobody that does what you do out here. I think you would do really well. And so for four years, she was on me and I said, okay, fine. So finally, I came out here and two weeks after I moved out here, she moved back to the mainland, but that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. You know, she moved back to be by your mom. So I understand that, but, uh, yeah. So it was, it was a big thing. You know, I sold my practice. Um, Cause you're from the, I mean, you're from East coast. So like East that's coast. a big, that's big, huge, huge move. It's like yeah. 5,000 miles, right? 5,000 miles away. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, my mom was not a fan. Um, the year before I moved, my dad passed away. Mm. So I'm an only child. Yeah. So it was hard on my mom. Um, but I think she realized that if I didn't do it, that I'd always look back and say, Hey, what could have been? Right. And she knows that I think that's the worst thing that you can do is have regrets. And I think you should always take that leap. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but you can always say, man, I tried, you know, I hate, isn't it? So, I'd rather live with the trying and it didn't work yeah. than the regret of what if I yeah, did, yeah, right? Because, you know, if it. If it fails, and eh, you know, it fails. Exactly. And you chalk it up to a learning experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. So, totally. Yeah. I love that. And so yeah. let's share a little bit about our story because it's really unique, right? Like you got to <laughs> Island <laughs> yeah. and you kind of mis messaged me, right? Like she thought I was a different Stephanie of all things, right? So tell me a little bit of your story. We're going to hear both sides of our story um, and put it together because <laughs> it was kind of like fate, right? Like we knew we were yeah, supposed to meet, yeah, like, but how it happened was kind of funny. It was super crazy. So... Um, my friend that moved out here and bought the condo, um, we ended up having a going away party for her. And there was this woman, Stephanie, that was one <laughs> of her friends that I met at this party. <laughs> so on Facebook, you know how they have that, you may know these people. Right. So this <laughs> Stephanie pops up. I'm like, oh, that must be the Stephanie I met. Because, you know, they're both blonde. Right. So I'm like, ah. So I'm, I friend requested her. That wasn't the right Stephanie. <laughs> but and you it, friend her and you messaged me. And you, and you said something like that. You said something like, hey, it was so good to meet you the other, you know, like at the party. But And you like totally sold me yep. on me being that. Uh, yeah. And I was like, I, I love you. I love yeah. that you're just here. I love that you're a massage therapist. Like it was so funny. Like I was so stoked <laughs> to meet a new massage therapist like on the island. And I loved, and I was like, and I'm not her. Like I'm not that Stephanie. But I feel like we should know each other, right? And then I think yeah. I mentioned B&I to you. Right? Did I mention BIC? Yeah, so, so she had, um, Stephanie had messaged me and said, hey, my massage therapist is sick. 
she canceled on me today. Do you have any openings? And I'm like, absolutely. Because, I mean, when I first moved here, I worked at a day spa down in Kealakekua for a little bit and then opened up my own practice, but it was lagging, right? So um, I said, absolutely. I was seeing patients seven days a week whenever they wanted. I saw patients 8.30 at night right. sometimes. Um, but, you know, I did what I did what I had to do right. to try and pay my bills. Um, <clears throat> and so... I was like, absolutely, come on in. <laughs> yes, of course I can fit you in. Yes, I just happened to have a cancellation. <laughs> so um, she came in, we started talking. Uh, she started talking about BNI and mentioned some of the chapters that they had. And so uh, she suggested that I contact... Um, the morning group, right? Yeah, because morning, you, you're the, such a morning the, person. Yeah. And that morning, like the morning they group. meet at like eight in the morning or seven thirty in the morning. So it was like yeah. perfect timing for you. Yeah. But it was like be, it would be a great way to get networked and get there. And yeah. believe me, I had that massage with her and I was like, Oh man, I'm not going to anyone else. Like, Melissa, you are amazing. You have hands of crazy muscle. Like you don't don't let these little hands like, do not be like, you know, don't underestimate her. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I just remember having that massage going, what the fuck? Like it is, it was so amazing. And it was like, holy shit, more people need to know you. You need to be thriving here. And BNI was such a great network for beginners, especially coming back on island. Yeah. And in your industry, such a huge yeah, opportunity, yeah. right? So um, those of you that don't know, BNI is a uh, business networking uh, group and it is global. And what they do is they have one person per profession in the group and uh, you basically have 20 to 40 other business owners that are your marketing team. So anytime somebody off uh, mentioned massage, my card came out or my name came up. So it was instrumental in building my business yeah. um, when I joined. And the funny thing is, is you know, it's not a cheap group no. to join. So at the time when she brought it up, um, I had already gone through all of my money. <laughs> it happens. We yeah. live in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. Don't be so hard on yourself. You just, it you know. So yeah. um, I, at that point, I was, um, you know, calling my mommy for some financial assistance. So I couldn't really commit to coming up with that money and asking my mom for more than what she was helping me with. Um, and that's a whole nother story about having to ask my mommy for money. <laughs> yeah. um, we all need help at times. And as entrepreneurs, yeah. it's really tough. And yeah. moving into a new space, like right. it all happens. Right. Right. And so um, what Stephanie offered is a barter. So a barter of services. So massages for her to pay for my first year of b &I. I met her like a month was, before, yeah. but I believed in you. Yeah. And I felt like, you know what, worst case scenario, I'm going to get massages that I know are worth it. So, you right. know, whether you use BNI or not, but I was hoping that you would. And, um, and it was just an opportunity yeah. where I had the funds to support you. And I was like, hey, I don't want you to lose this opportunity. There's not often a massage spot available in BNI. Right. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it was just like this really creative offer that I was like, what would it do if I just you know, paid for it. And we train, you know, we bartered for the massage equality, right? So it was right. like four massages for whatever it was. And I remember doing that in other, on my side, right? People are like, you don't even know this check. Like she could leave Ireland tomorrow, <laughs> you know, like, you know how it is. Like people are like, yeah, if you do yeah, not live here for a minimum of three yeah. years, there's this constant wave of people who cannot stay on island for longer than three years. Like they get that three year itch and then they're done. And so she was a newbie. This was a risk. Right? Like a lot of people were like, you don't know her. And I said, you know what? I do. Like, it's gonna make me cry. But uh, I do know her. I felt like she was my soul sister. We have Marie is our middle name. Yep. Um, so we just came from a certain cut of women, right? Like where we yep. do what we're gonna do. We say what we're gonna do. We show up. We, and it was like, dude, worst case scenario, I'm getting four massages. Like, you know, whether she does anything with B&I, I, I don't, I didn't know right. you that well at that point, right. but I knew that if you showed up because you're such the sauce, like you are not a woman that speaks and doesn't like exceed expectations. And I'm going to talk about your school here in a sec, because yeah. I didn't know that Melissa could clone herself. I had no idea if anybody could clone herself, it's Melissa. Like she has the skill to take these amazing raw talent 
you know, massage therapists and bring them into Melissa's. They're like mini Melissa's, you know? And it's like, how the hell did you, because she has me often come in and be like one of the first right, yeah. people to give feedback. And then I yep. get to do it, see them right before they get to graduate, right? And the transformation that you do with your students, Melissa, is insane. It's so Thank cool. You. Thank you. So it just speaks to you as a teacher. It speaks to your curriculum. It it's speaks those young, to that, eager you know? minds. Yeah, but it's not even yeah. my, I mean, it's just like, again, you, I, it's not just one time. It's not just one, I've seen this over at least 15 massage therapists where the way that they started was not how they ended. No. Nope. And they ended in the techniques that were just so incredibly powerful of what makes your stuff mm. special, right? Like where you don't miss anything and there's a certain timing to it. Yeah. And the, the way that like you understand the body and this isn't just a woo woo massage. Like this is a, 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 this is a muscle, right? My pro Institute medical massage center and Academy. Like it really is about understanding how the body works and you can feel the difference in how they, how they grow. Cause we've had some people who went to other schools and came to yours and it was different and their technique yes. was a certain way in the beginning and changed in the end. So I'm curious, Absolutely. you know, I know this was a dream, right? This is a dream to have, yeah. a, to have this come to life. Yeah. How is it? How many years have you had the school now? Uh, so I created Myo Pro in 2018 and uh, Myo Pro Institute offered advanced training classes to already licensed LMTs starting in 2019. So that was kind of like my beta run of my 10 month program, right? right? So I offered, um, and the reason I did it is because when I first moved here, I got a few massages and- It's okay, dirty laundry, remember we can yeah, speak here. <laughs> so- <laughs> Speak it! <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I admit I'm a massage snob and I think all massage therapists want to receive massages the way they do them. And to my way of thinking, the massages that I received here in exchanges, trying to find somebody that was like me, uh, lacked. So the idea to clone yourself that's, was born. That's, that's, the safe, <laughs> that's the safe word that I'm gonna stick with. That's the story. Um, so the more that I saw things that were lacking, and even some of the basic stuff that I learned when I was in school. So, you know, I went into, uh, to school in New York at Onondaga School of Therapeutic Massage, where I ended up teaching for almost 10 years. And um, that program was 1,000 hours. So Hawaii has a 570-hour program, which is not medically based. Um, and the graduates that I saw coming out lacked a thorough understanding of a and p myology and treatment techniques and assessment what's a and p you got to speak so language anatomy and physiology okay, right yeah. myology which is the study of muscles and treatment techniques and assessment you know being able to assess what the patient has when they come in mm -hmm. not diagnose them but assess their symptoms yeah right? so either, you're sensitive either, to by, either by range of motion right. or looking at those symptoms in comparison to orthopedic conditions, yeah. right? So that was seriously lacking. So I said, well, what can I do? And so I look back on all the stuff that I learned in school and in my continuing ed that I've had. And I designed 10 classes, 10 to 12 classes, and they were weekend seminars, Saturday and Sunday. People could sign up for one, or all of them, which was what I called the Myopo, Myopro principle. And each one of those classes, um, I believe I had, some classes were like six to eight people, some were four. And I had four LMTs that signed up for it. And every single one of them loved the classes. Mm -hmm. And um, three of them actually moved off island and got jobs in PT departments, wow, rehab centers. Um, because of the so education you were able to Because of the education, yeah. yeah. And I can tell you that I think that that's what I noticed here 
in terms of when they begin and when they end is you can tell that they know how to hear the body. Yes. You can tell that they know when I tell them my shoulder is hurting, they understand what muscle or what tendon or whatever is going on and they treat it differently because they have that knowledge. So I don't think we can, you know, I, I don't want you to minimize what you brought to the table because I feel like your vision is say, whoa, 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 there's a shortage here. Yeah. I want to fulfill it. And I feel like you did. And I feel like you are. And yeah. I feel like it could even get bigger if you allow it yeah. to go bigger. Well, when, when I first started it, it was just for LMTs. And then I kept noticing that it was the basic stuff that they needed, like basic knowledge of range of motion, of that A&P, of that myology. And I said, well, geez, maybe I should get a school and start with the newbies. Right. And so now I've got mini me's running around. I love it. Right? Thank you. Not necessarily cookie cutter the exact work that I do, which I would think a couple of them may, um, because I think they all have their own, they, they, do, bring, they, have their they bring their own flavor but I'm talking to, to the work. But the pace, right? Yeah. right? There's a way to pace a 90 minute massage yeah. that feels like it's a complete, you know, I've done right. 90 minute where it feels like, wait, how, that didn't feel complete. Yeah. And I've been in the 90 minute where it feels complete. And so there's something about the completeness. There's something about the, the range of motion, understanding the muscles, understanding yes. the body is different in the way that you train than like the other student massage, you know, st right. thing places I've been to. It's more woo woo, like more fluffy. It's more, it's not necessarily listening to the body. It just feels like they're going through the, um, I don't know how to say it. They're going through the motions in a way. Right. Does right. that make sense? So, um, and not, not to disparage just relaxation Swedish massage, because that's the basic of everything that we do. That's the first thing you learn is Swedish and a basic Swedish routine. Um, but sometimes people need more than that. They need more than just the feel good, right. the, okay, I'm going to snore, drool, maybe fall asleep. But the next day when I wake up, I still have the issues. Right. So um, I wanted my students to be able to recognize those issues and to treat those issues. That's cool. Um, yeah. So, I, yeah. I, I mean, so, I love it. I love that yeah. you brought it here. I love that it's rooted. I love that, you know, I know one day you're going to retire and not have your hands on bodies. And now yeah. we have replacements. So that's helpful yeah. for someone like me who doesn't <laughs> want to give her up. I'm going to give her up. Um, you know, so that, that's helpful for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, like when you think about, because I, I feel like so many entrepreneurs have visions, have ideas for schools, have ideas. What makes you different from taking that idea, that concept to like, and bring it to life? What do you think is different with how you do? I mean, because you're a massage therapist that, yeah. that that brought things to life. You don't see, there's a lot of massage therapists out there. They're like yeah. real estate agents. I mean, I hate to say it, but there's a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But not everyone's starting a school. Not everyone is taking their visions and wanting to make things different. What do you think sets you apart and why do you think you're different there? Ooh. Asking the tough questions I am. Yeah. And feed my ego. At the ah! time. Um, well, you need it because you're good. <laughs> I don't need to feed your ego. I'm just telling you the truth, girl. Well, I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, even when I was back in New York uh, working for the school, I saw how the school was run, which I wasn't really impressed with towards the end, which is why I left. Um, and I had the idea that I wanted to start my own school mm -hmm. um, there. Yeah. And then when I came out here, I just kind of fought, fell into being really comfortable, seeing the patients right. that I saw every week, getting the money. And then it was basically kind of like a kick in the pants by an outside individual that I talked to mm -hmm. and I told him about my idea that, you know, I probably should come up with some, some classes yeah. to teach the LMTs because, you know, I'm really not impressed with the other LMTs. That and he's like, well, what's stopping you from doing it? Mm. So you got challenged. I'm like, well, nothing really other than my own laziness. Yeah. You know, and you can, you can get complacent and you can get lazy. And I think we do fall into like those little ruts sometimes, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it's comfortable. Yeah. And new things can be uncomfortable. Yeah. And challenging. Right. right? So my first thing was to get the LLC mm. to get that LLC set up and to get cards and then start making my, and at this point 
in 2018, Hawaii didn't require any continuing education. So anybody that took my classes were taking it because they wanted to be there. Mm. They wanted to learn. That makes a difference too. New techniques, yeah. right? Um, since then, 2022, um, Hawaii State has implemented continuing education, right? Which is good because in the process, back in I think believe it was. Um, 2022, yes. mm -hmm. when I got my um, NCBTMB approved provider status. Right. So what I did is I took some of those weekend courses that I was offering and actually turned them into the accreditation committee with the NCBTMB and got approved. So I've got eight classes, eight wow. courses that That's are so approved cool. for continuing education. I remember when this was just a concept and we were talking about it on the way yeah. to the beach and talking about yeah. how she needed to get accredited and offer classes yeah. and, 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 you know, just like really building yeah. the knowledge over the last, you know, how many years have you been in the industry? 24. Yeah. So it's for 24 years, yeah. teaching different coasts, different variety of students, different cultures, right? Like you've right. really been in a lot of different environments. Yes. I think one thing that you're, you're minimizing and I like to highlight that I think does make you different is that you also have a business education where you, right? Didn't you get a business education? And I think that's yes. something that's missing in the massage industry. Yes. Yes. So like, what does it mean to run a business versus working for somebody else? Right. I think the industry teaches people how to work for somebody else right. and rent, it it's does. like, you know, rent the space from the somebody, it but does. they don't teach you what it means to stand on your own as an entrepreneur, how to get set up on your own, yeah. how to like, in, you know what I mean? How to invoice, how to do this, how to do taxes, how to do this. Right. And you had that background, right? You, you went and had a yeah, business so, administration, <clears throat> right? Uh, when I first went to college after high school, um, I went for business, for accounting and business management. Right. And promptly got kicked out after my first year. <laughs> Why? I partied too much. Oh, okay, got it. So it's not because you're not smart. You're no, not smart. I just didn't apply myself. Yeah. You know, it okay. was a large university campus. You're having fun. Your girl liked the townies. Yeah. Okay. So I went out and just didn't take it seriously. Um, got kicked out and then ended up going back to school um, at a different college. And I changed my major to small business management mm -hmm. because at that point I realized that I was way too much of an asshole ah. to work for somebody. Yeah. So if I was going to go back to school, I was going to go back to something that was going to benefit me yeah. and only me. Right. Yeah. So it was small business management for my first degree. Um, and then I graduated from there. Couldn't find a job that wanted to pay me the money that I wanted to make. And so I started bartending. Mm -hmm. And during the bartending, I decided that, you know, I had originally, before I went for small business management, I wanted to go to massage school, mm -hmm. but it wasn't an approved program. So what sent me back to college was the TRA Act, okay. which was a training rehabilitation act. Right. So I worked for a big, um, excuse me, big manufacturing company. That got shut down, or that laid me off, actually. Mm -hmm. And so they sent me back, and massage wasn't accredited at that time. So I said, all right, I'll do small business management, because that's going to help me out. So when I was bartending, I said, you know what, I'm going to go for small business or uh, massage therapy. So I went to school during the day and bartended at night yeah. to pay for it. Yeah. yeah. And then once I got finished with massage school, I couldn't find a job. Now, in the process, I had quit bartending and um, couldn't find a job massaging, so I decided to go back to school. So I went back to school and I had a accounting degree wow. or accounting ma uh, major with taxation minor. Wow. And two weeks into the semester, carrying 19 credits, I got five job offers for massage. Wow. And I took them all. Wow. So I went to school full time and worked five different jobs on call. Wow. On tax day too. This is our first April 15th. Yeah. On tax, tax day. day. And you have tax experience. But don't you yeah. think that having that balanced with the massage therapy like really does make you a unique 
you know, individual in the industry, right? It helps yeah. you see things in a different way. I know you're logistically incredibly strong. You have lots of details going on and, you know, yeah. you don't drop a ball. I mean, I very I try, rarely, I try not to. Very rarely have I seen you drop a ball. I try I mean, not to. Maybe tired at eight o'clock at night because she's going to bed. <laughs> but like most of the time, right. you know, if I catch you at the right moment, even if it's 530 in the morning, which is better mm -hmm. than 530 at night sometimes, yep, right? Yep. Uh, but yeah, I just, I think it's important to understand the makeup of, what creates you uniquely and why the school was developed the way it is to fill that gap. And I feel like when you're teaching from this place of, you know, entrepreneurship, right. And, yeah. and, and, and like that independence and that accountability and that responsibility, because it's different than being an employee, right? Like I talk right. about, so I'm a business coach, you know, and um, I've been, you know, working, I had my own business since 2008 and I've seen a variety of different people, but I, I tend to work with startups or people who are, you know, going from single yeah. solo to their first employee or their first five employees or their first 10. And then they get to a certain point and they need someone bigger than me. Right. But like ultimately what I notice in that is that there is this commitment to a vision that. Yeah. And it's different. Like not everyone comes to me and I'm like, look, I love that you want to be an entrepreneur, but that's you want security, too. And. We know how it is in this, <laughs> being an entrepreneur, we're, we're not yeah. getting consistent it's, paychecks for a bit, that. right? Like this is a not something that you, you do have to like kind of run with, roll with what's here, make stuff happen, create opportunities. Like it's not that every day, two yes. weeks paycheck vibe. And right. if you want that, bless you. Like I love that about that. I can see why that's a safe route, but it's so not our life, right? Yeah. Like it's so not our life. And so yeah. I'm curious, like how do you feel like you having an entrepreneurial spirit, like what you called I'd be the worst employee, but it was only because you have an entrepreneurial spirit. You have a right. leadership yeah. that you want things a certain way. You come with this like vision, you bring this to life and then you're helping other people fall into your vision, right? Yeah. And, and bring that to life because obviously, you can't have a school if people aren't students and you can't, right. you know, have a podcast if people aren't listening. Like, you know, we all need to work together. Right. But I'm so curious, like, how do you feel like being an entrepreneur has influenced how you teach or how you created the school or, you know what I mean? Like, what, what do you feel like that makes you different? That what that edge, you know, I think everything, um, you know, everything that you've been through, everything that I've been through, everything that I've done work wise um, leads me to be a really good teacher. Mm. You know, I think, um, I think I can get my points across, um, in good ways. Mm. And I use a variety of different teaching, mm -hmm. um, styles because every student is different. Right. You can't just teach one thing. Right. So I so try to do, I try to do a, a mixture of everything in my classes but I think they really benefit from my experience. Yeah. You know, yeah. not only, uh, you know, the experience with like my continuing ed and my work experience, but life experience as well. Yeah. You know, I like to, I like to add all of that in. And I mean, I'm, I'm just somebody that doesn't want to fail. Mm. I don't want to fail. I don't want to What is fail up. to you? Is failing give up? I mean, that's what you kind of said right there. But like, what really is failure? Um, I think giving up on something that you've had in your mind, like a dream that you've had, mm -hmm. and not taking a step towards that dream. Yeah. You know, like I, there are times when I get so overwhelmed with things. And there's so many things that I have on my plate that I'm doing. And that's, you know, people come in here and they're like, you've got your office, you've got the school. And then you've got all these little side little shit things that you're making. Right. You're so like, Where do you have time to do this podcast? Right? Yeah. And I don't look at it as that. Like the little artisanal things that I make, the little creative things that I make with um, Firestar Holistics, those soaps, mm -hmm. those candles, the salve, the muscle salve, that's all a creative escape. For me but I, but I don't think it should be an escape I think that we need to be creative and I think that yeah. doing those creative things are actually things that feed our soul and I think right. that we need to keep that in mind when we're doing business and yeah. and that we can't lose 
it can't just be about the dollars. It can't just be about the numbers. It, it has to be about where's our heart and soul. And I feel like, cre especially for women yeah. in business, creativity is a huge way thing that I think gets overlooked if it's not monetized, yeah. right? Like it's like, oh, if it's not monetized, it doesn't bring money, it's not worth it. Right. Versus, wait a second, how do you feel when you're doing it? How do you like when you get creative ideas? How do you like when people come to you and be like, oh my God, that shit's so amazing, make some more. Like there's mm -hmm. something about that that goes beyond feeding you in a deeper way that helps you show up in the shit sometimes. Right. Because come on, like running running the business is not easy. No. You're dealing with, you know, you're dealing with lots of different moving parts and lots of different Absolutely. things and lots of Absolutely. things that can drain you. And especially when it's a solo thing where it's not solo meaning you don't have people that work for you, but it lands on your shoulders, right? Yes. Your, the pressure is on your shoulders. You don't get yes. to like share that weight. And I feel like as a woman in yeah. business, you know, even though we can do it, and I think we do it really well, I do think there's something asked of us to not give up our creative effort, right? Not give yeah. up the, those outlets that are going to feed us. Because she's an amazing cook, too. And uh, believe me, I get the benefits of perks of, <laughs> I make too much pasta salad. I'm like, I will take it. I will take the pound of pasta salad. Um, you know, and so I get the perks of you cooking and I get the perks of you, you know, getting creative and like helping right. me get these Christmas presents, you know, from, because I love supporting local. I love supporting the things that you do and your creative effort. And I think when people say that to you, like, where do you find the time? I think for you, it's more of a compliment. Like, how the fuck are you doing all of this? Yeah. And I think there's those moments where you're like, because I love it. And, and yeah. I think that's what gets you up in the morning, right? Like, because you love it. it. If you didn't love massage, right. you wouldn't be teaching it. Right. You know, I think that there, that heart comes through. Not just your education. I mean, you're an amazing teacher. I don't think anyone can argue with that. You're an amazing entrepreneur. I mean, how you've been able to pull off what you've been able to pull off. I mean, like, how you created this office. Like, seriously. Like, the yes. bathroom and the, you know, the, the, and negotiating the deals and fighting for what you needed. Like, you're a woman that is so inspiring to so many people and nobody i mean where you came from where your roots are right no one modeled that for you find us the farm right like i guess at some level on the farm and your parents like did you see them like were they entrepreneurs is that where you learned no that's both, what i'm saying they both worked for but that's my point people. my point is you yeah. broke the mold yeah Becoming yeah. an entrepreneur, moving 5,000 miles away, yeah. having a drink. Like, I want you to see that this isn't like you're born into it, so of course I'm going to become it. Right. You created a life that you wanted. Yes. And you, out of a dream that you had. Yes. And I think we need to, like, honor the bigness of that because so many people have dreams and don't take the the first step of registering the LLC, yeah, getting that business card, yeah, getting into being that, you know, a networking, you know, a marketing, something. They don't take those first steps, yeah. and so I'm curious if you had advice for your younger self when you were first starting. What would you say? What would you say for those entrepreneurs out there that have those dreams and they've been on that to do list, but they're not taking that action? Like, what is the wisdom that you have for them? So I'm a big scribbler. Um. I write down everything and that's how the layout of the school here came about. It's how the layout of my classes came about. It was me just saying, all right, what do I want to do? What do I want to bring across for mm -hmm. other people? And I think that that brainstorming is what you guys have to keep together and keep looking at if if you haven't run with the idea yet keep those pages and keep reading them because mm. i think the more you read them the more things you're going to add to them because yeah. i would always say okay here's my sheet of classes and as i was watching television um the paper would be on the side or the book would be on the side of the couch and I would pull it up and I'd look and I'm like you know this class would benefit that so if they took this class then I could have this class that they could go to so it was like a more advanced thing and I would write that down and it might seem daunting if you have big dreams but I think it's those little steps that 
propel you, mm. right? Like for me, the that first thing was I need to get the LLC. Mm. So let me do that. And it was a lot easier than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And then let's get some business cards. And that really got me pumped up, seven business cards. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know why. Yeah, it I remember. I, I it, remember does. it does. It does. And there's something about, like, it feels official, right? Yeah. Like, there's this, like, I got my website. I feel official. Yeah. And, you know, something I think that you're really pointing to is is when you have a clear vision. Yes, you know, it's, it's, it takes a lot of time. Like this is not something we get to snap our fingers and you get like instant gratification. <laughs> there, right. It is not instant gratification. And I think that when yeah. you build a business of a dream that it's about the everyday commitment to the dream yes. that is like, okay, did I take any steps forward today? But I showed up with it. Right. I right. showed up to serve that vision and I took steps. And I think that that's the thing. I think that breaking it down, right? Like hearing you say it, yeah. it's like, absolutely. Like get clear on what you want to be building. Mm -hmm. Keep adding to that. Have that as a focal attention point. Keep coming back yeah. and revisiting every day. And break it down to what's a, one next step I can take today, right? And, right? and surround yourself with people that do believe in you. Surround yourself with people that are doing bigger things. I think it's harder to do bigger things like I get to, you know, you're my bestie. So I get to see all this shit and I'm like, damn girl, you know, where I get to hang out with people with big dreams and big visions and big life that I get to also be big where right. like, you know, being the biggest fish in the pond sometimes can be really hard because you're like the only person like that has a bigger vision. But I yeah. tend to surround myself with people who are even cooler than me. Uh, and you, you know, need that, it's a you thing. need people Absolutely. around you that are going to push you. Absolutely. That are going to challenge you. Absolutely. That are going to call you out yeah. when you're fucking up. Yeah. Or when you're just sitting on your ass not doing anything. Like, with, what? with kindness and love. And from my version. My version is kindness and love. You don't mine usually is not Mine usually isn't. Hers is just straight up talk. Straight talk. Straight, straight talk. I'm yeah. straight up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. But let's take a little break. Okay. And we'll be right back. 